and God's love and say, God, this one is your call. God, this is your, uh, your job. God, this, uh, this guy, uh, Russell, only you know what he went through in his life. Only you know the secrets that he probably never told anybody that may have hurt his life. Just like all of us have our little bag of secrets. Our little things in our hearts that we'll never ever tell anyone because it hurts too much to even bring it out. And nobody ever, oh, why can't you do something better with your life? Why can't you do this? And everybody can judge you. But nobody ever has to live inside your brain and your feelings and your thoughts and know all the hurt, pain, and shame that you've been through that makes you who you are. I want you to know that if Russell was speaking to you today, he would say, guilt is your greatest enemy. Shame is your greatest enemy. Not being prepared is your greatest enemy. Don't feel guilt in your life anymore. I'm telling you, if he can leave you a message, don't feel guilt anymore. Stop trying to live everybody else's life and live your own life for, for you. You live your life. Live it to the fullest and be happy about, uh, about your life. Don't let people throw guilt on you. Oh, that you should have been this and should have been that. Uh, forget that. This life is your life and you live it. And love and leave a legacy. Amen? Amen. Just want to... Uh, so what do you do it when you've done everything? And what do we do when we've said everything for him, have done everything, have tried to tell him to do everything? All we can do is say, God, we place our trust in you. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake thee. Place your trust in me. God's word says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord. I trust in him. Then he says, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, on my thoughts, my plans for you. In all your ways, I acknowledge God, and He will direct my paths. And I want you to know that He would tell you, man, if death can come sudden. I mean, I mean if this is not an eye-opener for us, then nothing is. I mean, if it's somebody older, and they've lived a lot of years, and they've got a lot of grandkids and great-grandkids, and they were suffering, then we can let them go easy, can't we? We can, we can let them go. I mean, it still hurts. You know, there's a vacuum there. But, but, you know, it's easy to let them go because of the long life. But when it's someone young, it's hard to do that. But what it should be doing for us today, if it does nothing else, if y'all came here, then at least take something with you. And what I would want you to take with you is something that he would say, this can come sudden, it can creep up on you quick, and it can take you away real fast. And my question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you really ready if you want to see me someday? Death is never an unforeseen accident. It's going to happen to all of us. It's living. That's the hard thing. I want you to think of all the problems that you have and think about them out right now and think, I want to live forever with every issue I have. That's a lot of, that's a lot of living, man. I don't know about you, but sometimes all those issues are from guilt. And from shame, am I right? From stuff that people have heaped on you. All their expectations on you. And uh, I just hope and pray that the family will know exactly what you said. Exactly what you said, young lady. Listen to me. He's free tonight. And also you, Jason. He's free. He's got that finger back, man. He's got his leg back. Standing clean. His lungs are strong. His liver is straight. These are the things that are important. And here's what people say to say, Pastor Jimmy, well, he didn't come to church that long. Uh, he didn't come that much. He didn't leave a lot in the basket. He was always in the back. He always left church. He always left. I said, listen to me. The bottom line is this. I am not God. I'm clear about that. And the bottom line is this. It says in Psalm 121, he who made the heavens and the earth called the world into existence by his breath made the stars. I put my trust in Him, maker of heaven and earth. And this evening, I want to thank you for this memorial service. I want to thank you that there's a memory, but I, uh, but I want to leave a final memory for you. That Russell today, I'm telling you, I was at home. I was sitting down, and then I laid down. I just thought about this. I held my paper. I got my notebook out. I started writing. I said, what would he want to say? Don't live your life in guilt. Don't live it in shame. 
Forgive yourself for your past mistakes or you're going to carry them around like old luggage all your life, right or wrong. And in the end, prepare yourself because this, we're all going to go through. All of us. If you're lucky and you're blessed, you get to have a couple of kids. And they get to get married and they get to make some babies and stuff like that. And there's a little grandchild I saw, right? Right? The little boy, am I correct? Okay, the little grandchild too, a cute kid. Right? Some kids are ugly, but he's, he's a cute kid. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that. Some kids are ugly when they're born. They're just, they're just ugly. ugly kids. And you say nice stuff about them, but they're ugly. Russell would tell you that too. He said, it's an ugly baby. That's one ugly little baby. They're just, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, listen to me, listen to me. This is a memorial service. Okay. How many of you I remember Russell being being straight and formal and speaking in the King James? Yes, it's very good to be sure. awake today, Jason. Bless God and thank you. Very good, Jason. And how do you feel today? Yeah, I I, I don't think so. I talked to him. He, he looked like a hippie. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? He looked like he was still stuck in 1978 or something like that. All he needed was a Harley. And I, just I'm just being honest, right? And, and just. Just so, so just like, he would concur with me, you know, that, 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 you know, man, Pastor Dean, there's some ugly babies, you know. <laughs> Not your church, you know, but, you know, nothing I've seen in other churches. I'm just doing that to play with you. He, listen, you gotta, life is fun. And you got to laugh at that on this side. Are you following me yet? There is a strategy to what I'm saying here. You got to laugh at that and take some humor and take some comfort. Mom's got like five blankets around her. If we put any more around her, she's going to look like a tent. Right? She's hurting, man. She loves her little baby boy. If anything would happen to you, they'd be messed up too. Or to any of you, they'd be messed up too. I'd hear about it immediately, I'm, immediately, no matter where I am, I'm going to get a call. I was out of the state on this one, and I got a call. I just want you to know, if he could leave you a word of encouragement, it would be, don't live your life in guilt. I did that, doesn't work. Got a hat, got a t-shirt. Don't live your life in shame, got a hat, t-shirt, doesn't work. Don't live to be anybody else. Don't try to live up to everybody else's standards, because it'll rob you of yours, right? It's going to rob you of what you're supposed to be. And finally, are you prepared? Because this will happen again. We will be here again. For somebody else. Someone else that we know. Right? Someone else that we love. And you'll come say, hey, Pastor Jim, how you doing? And we'll know each other that time. And then as the years go on, we'll know each other more. And I'll get to meet your kids, maybe. Hopefully, uh, you'll never have to bury them, but they will bury us. So I want to thank you for being here. I want to let you know that, that uh, very clearly, it is not wrong to weep. I want to just, it's very important that I address this. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4.15, he says, Not to sorrow over the departed, our loved ones. Paul said, don't sorrow. But what he meant was, don't be guilty and fearful for, uh, be, uh, because of what could have been. Uh, he says, if you're going to cry, then cry for them. Uh, miss them. They're not here. He's not going to see his grandkids anymore. He's not going to see you right now anymore, Jason. That, if you want to cry for that, cry for that. And then there's going to come a time of anger. You're going to feel like, man, why, God? You know, this guy was too young. And there's going to come that time. And let that anger go through you. Don't fight it off because it will shut you down and get you depressed. You let that go. Just go ahead and be angry. Ask God why. And then I want you to remember his message to you today. This could happen any day, any minute, any hour. Any drunk driver, anybody. Something could happen. A car accident. Target. Anything could happen. And it could hurt you. And it could be over. In the book of James, I'll close here with this. It says, life it's but a vapor, a fleeting vapor, he said. I'm going here one day and the next, it's over, like a cloud. James said, I'm here one day and like a, a, a little burst of cloud, I'm gone and it's over. I
just want to say thank you to all of you. I want to pray for him now. And pray that God, uh, God will be with uh, him and with his family. But mostly, I know that his, his, uh, his eternity is set. I think that is so cool. I don't know who put it there, but that time, it's time to get ready. It's time to be ready and time to stay ready. Because this will happen to all of us. And the question is, am I really going to see my loved ones on the other side? I just want to challenge you. I want to thank you all for coming. Such a nice turnout. I know it was quick. This all happened fast. Please talk to mom and show them some love. I know that they'll need some. And, and listen to me. Not only tonight, in these next couple of days, man, that some of you say, you know what? I'm going to wait a week and then I'm going to send my card. Because they're going to need some love after this wears down and they go through some of the grieving process. They're going to need some phone calls and they're going to need some, they're going to need some care. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's pray. It's okay. You can remain seated just if you value this. Our Father in heaven, maker of heaven and earth, King of kings and Lord of lords, and the great I am, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I pray in your holy name, O oh God, and I thank you for Russell. I thank you that he accepted Jesus, uh, your son, as Lord and Savior. I thank you that, that he is in your presence, Lord. Your word says it. If you believe in me and receive me and confess me with your mouth, you shall be saved. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that when he said uh, good night on this side, he said good morning on the other side. And, Father, I thank you for each and every friend, family member, every, every person that came here today. Thank you, Lord. It means so much, Lord. Russell would probably be stunned that so many showed up. I know that. He'd be stunned that so many showed up and that cared. So, Father, I thank you and I pray that you will be with them as well. Keep them healthy, safe. Keep all of Russell's children safe. All of the Toronto family. Be with them at this tough and difficult time, Lord. Lord, I don't know all the words. Words are right now. Sometimes if we try to say too many, they're wasted. Let's just love the family. And be friendly to the family. Care for the family. Minister to their needs. Now, Father, we commit. We commit. Our brother Russell. Into the hands of a mighty, loving, gracious, and merciful God. In the name of the Father. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.